Barge into the room with wild abandon. It's a dark alcove you use to store a few modest valuables. And duck into whenever you're on a case and things start to get too hot to handle. Which is never. Check out the paper on the floor. It appears to be a note delivered to you from Ace Dick. It smells a little like pee. You hate him so much. You stash the unpleasant note in your inventory. Claire haunting tuber refrain. You can't do it. That tuba is filthy. Check out the paper on the wall. It's another business card for an intriguing trade. Some of these services sound really exotic. Second-hand hornography, handling your dirty instruments since 1920. Rusty trombones, filthy tubas, funky trumpets, and more. 1-800-SAX-SAX-SAX. Put card in your inventory. Get a dummy elevator. You climb into the elevator, sometimes called a dumbwaiter. It's pitch black inside. There's only one direction to go. Go down. The dumbwaiter goes down a little bit, then stops. This is as far as it goes. The interior is somewhat illuminated from light coming in through a slit on the wall you're facing. It looks like you can slip objects through it, as long as they are narrow enough. Peep through the slit. It's hard to see anything through it, but you hear a voice again. Listen. It's Ace Dick's office again. He is still on the phone and sounds really surly. He seems quite upset about a mix-up involving large stone busts instead of some other service he believed he was getting. He seems to be wondering if he has the right business card. Busts are us. We'll polish your head for no extra fee. Feed your busts are us card through slot. You deposit into the slot the busts are us card but pee on the card beforehand. A little too late, you realize you should have peed on the card to stick it to Ace. You decide to pee on it anyway. Cutscene. Ace Dick picks up the card and puts it in his inventory. He considers the card carefully. He calls the number, hoping this one will bring satisfaction. After a little while, some whores show up. End cutscene. It looks like Ace got the better of you once again. Dang! Take swig from flask of whiskey. Feelings of dejection overwhelm you. You are tired of being shown up by your rival. He gets everything. All the good cases, the woman, the ability to open his office door. You'd wager he even enjoys the lion's share of the candy corn. You down a stiff belt from your flask of whiskey. You experience a boost in your imagination. Clean horns. Suddenly, you are entirely dissatisfied with the conditions of these horns. It is an absolute disgrace. You won't stand for it. You set about polishing the instruments, but it seems your imagination is too high to conduct normal day-to-day activities. You topple some of the horns. The clarinet breaks. If only there were a place that could serve as a proper outlet for such a high degree of imagination until the condition passed. Back to the old fort. In your heightened state of imagination, you fall down the stairs. You better get to the safety of your fort fast. You're no good to anyone out here. Hurry. You feel safe and sound in the cozy confines of your wobbly particle board walls. Drift into realm of make-believe. You stand in your imaginary office. With the mind, anything is possible. Your imaginary phone is ringing. Answer the imaginary phone. You answer the phone in the best Depression-era fast-talking way possible. On the other line is a hysterical dame. You tell her to calm down and give you the skinny on what all hubbub is about. Her answers are vague and one-dimensional. The case is quickly going nowhere. It turns out... Your imagination sucks. Eat steak dinners with hands. 
The steak dinners have been sitting around for a while. They are both spoiled. Gorge yourself on imaginary candy corn. They don't taste as good as real candy corn. Nevertheless, it gives your pulchritude a small boost. Try to take imaginary gun back into real world. You pick up the gun. You'd like to bring it back with you, but you cannot fathom how that is possible. Stride confidently through office door. You exit your office into the hallway. Go harass Ace Dick. You burst through Ace Dick's imaginary door, rolling up your non-existent sleeves. But he is nowhere to be found. His imaginary room is empty, most likely because Ace is currently not using his imagination. Leave room. You exit, but not before you leave an imaginary present on the floor. You are now facing south in the hallway. Enter the PI room. You hear noises behind the door. It sounds like swing music and riotous times being had. Whoever is in this office probably has a terrific imagination. But the door is locked. Follow the exit sign. You feel your imagination beginning to fade, so you hurry downstairs to the imaginary street. You find your motley collection of items which you earlier threw out the window in a fit of rage, stupidity, or both. Look up at your office window. You see a familiar face through the window. A friendly face. Your imagination wears off. You experience the lingering effects of your imagination. The stat remains at the same level, but no longer affords you its advantages. However, you remain just as useless in the real world. You are going to need to figure out a way to sober up fast. Chug coffee with no regard for temperature. You drink the coffee, which is lukewarm. It is foul, bitter, and ridiculously strong. You can only drink a little of it. Your imagination is reduced, while your vim enjoys a healthy boost. You feel terrific now, fit as a fiddle and bristling with coordination. Two pieces of candy corn fall onto the floor. Get candy corn. You put the candy corn into your hat. The phone is ringing again. Go check it out. Your phone is now missing three components, making it that much more difficult to answer this call from an undoubtedly hysterical dame. If only you could think of a way to reel in objects from the weird window slash mind space universe. Flip window upside down and shake to retrieve phone. You try to shake your belongings from the blasted portal. It appears to run on Etch-A-Sketch technology. Make lasso out of tape and pull phone back in. You use the magnetic tape to form a lasso. Maybe you can reel in your belongings this way. However, you think the tape lasso is way too light and flimsy to throw out the window with any significant distance or accuracy. You'll need something to weigh it down. Cut to the chase and use cinder block. You tie the tape to a cinder block, using it as an anchor. Throw out window. Examine the mural for hidden clues. It looks like there are two holes in the mural. They are spaced far apart, just wide enough for someone with sensible human anatomy to look through with both eyes. Look through them. You unplug the window again and have a gander. It's an unpleasant note. Problem Sleuth is impolite. Very rude. You can tell using your depth perception that the note is very close, only a few inches from your face. Poke curtain rod at note. A painting of an elf jostles on the other side. It falls to reveal a safe. The safe pops open, revealing the painting of an elf. Look through elf holes. It is the office of yet another one of your competitors, Pickle Inspector. He looks dazed, as if perhaps he's been trapped in this office for some time. There are strange glass containers in the corner. You wonder if there might be a business card, worded professionally of course, for a glass blower somewhere in his office, perhaps taped to something like a cinder block or the back of an elf painting. His office is dark for some reason. 
You suddenly hear noises coming from Ace Dick's office. You figure as long as your office is dark, you might as well check on him through the clown hole. Take a look. The whores tied Ace Dick up in a chair and stole his phone. The Huggy Bear bust is cracked open, and the treasure which was undoubtedly stashed inside has been stolen too. He was probably tortured for the information. Rejoice. You celebrate by mustering one of the silliest dances you've attempted in hours. Ace Dick hears your shenanigans from the other side. He seems to be pleading for a way to cut the rope. Try to get the Hutch Bust's attention. You can't imagine how you can get a statue's attention. You begin to covet the Hutch Bust and whatever secrets it guards. Climb down the tape to retrieve your things. The reel is way too weak to hold your weight. It will probably only be able to support and reel in lighter objects. Activate the reel to reel. The reel begins to turn, pulling the tape taut. The cinder block below does not budge. If the tape is retied to a lighter object, it will likely be pulled in through the window automatically. Give a piece of glass to cut rope. You go into the back room and down the elevator. Slip glass through slot. Ace receives the shard of glass. He uses it to cut himself free. You are now Ace Dick. You begin to question this feud you've been embroiled in with your neighbor for so long. After all, he did just give you the number for some honest-to-God whores, even if they did ultimately rob you. He also just helped you escape. Maybe it's time to bury the hatchet and help him out of his office. You feel you should get some supplies from your safe first, though. If only you could remember the combination. Check behind paper stuck to door for combo. You can't pull it off. It's stuck fast. Maybe a heavy object will knock it loose. Throw hutch bust at it. Using your extraordinary strength due to your unusually high vim characteristic, you lift the bust easily. Throw. You send the Owen Wilson paper word. <laughs> The bus crashed through the window. <laughs> the bus crashed through the window, knocking out an employee of Madame Mural. He was wielding a portable scaffold into place to prepare for some more mural work. He looks like he's in bad shape now. The hutch head cracked open, exposing riches. It... <laughs> It looks like one of the whores may have taken Starsky's sunglasses. The scaffold continues rolling, coming to a stop in front of your door, jamming it shut. <laughs> you are now trapped in your office too! You and Problem Sleuth will have to work together if you want to escape. Proceed commands for a stick with AD, and for Problem Sleuth with PS. AD. Reach through window and move scaffolding out of the way. The scaffolding is jammed in place. It seems the brake for the wheels was triggered after it came to a stop. You can't push it away either. The top just bumps up against the ceiling. There's no climbing out of the window with your portly frame because of the scaffold bars. Unless someone comes to help you, or you find a blowtorch to melt through the bars, you're probably not getting out of this office anytime soon. Nice try, though. Okay, forget it then. Pick up Tommy Gun. I beg your pardon? Get the phone pieces sitting around. You put the phone parts in your inventory. Slip P.S. his phone parts. You slip the phone parts through the slot to an awaiting problem sloop. But he is not waiting for them in the dumbwaiter. The phone parts fall somewhere into the dark shaft below. Nice work, bonehead McFuckup! Look inside Huggy Bear statue for riches. There is a hammer in the broken Snoop Dogg bust. You place the hammer in your inventory. P.S. Climb halfway out window, then unplug window. The window loses its extra dimensional portal properties and severs you midway through. You are dead. No wait, don't do that. You're not sure what you are thinking. Check behind clown poster. 
Behind the poster is another clown drawn directly on the metal. Under the paper is a long game code. This is probably a code you can use to return to a particular state in this game. You put it in your inventory. AD, pounce on keys before they disappear. You pick up the ring of keys. Okay, cool. Armed with your Tommy gun, you are one hard-boiled lug. Nobody messes with this tough guy, see? P.S. Go into dumbwaiter so you can receive an item. You go into the dumbwaiter. Ace Dick tries to give you an item, but the hammer is too big to fit into the slot. Ace gives you all his business cards instead. In return, you give him your collection of unpleasant notes. A.D. Examine notes. You recognize both of these notes. You wrote and delivered them to your neighbor to get his goat. One of them has something on the back. He wrote a rebuttal on the other side and taped it to the back of his fake safe for your viewing pleasure. Luckily, the combination to your safe is on this paper. You carelessly composed your note on this document without noticing. Use it to open safe. You enter the combination. The smaller compartment opens up to reveal three old-fashioned keyholes. Go look through pig painting to see what P.S. is up to. You have to unplug your large panoramic window from its portable generator first. Unplug window. Look through holes. Candy corn vampire! Ah! You topple backwards onto your particle board desk. It was supported by a couple of smaller busts including one of your favorites, Snoop Dogg from Soul Plane. Throw Snoop Dogg through big window portal. First, you organize all of the particle board into a neat pile to reduce clutter. You ready the Snoop for throwing. Throw. The bust crumbles against the rigid surface of the unplugged window. There's just no breaking the plane unless it's plugged in. Amidst the rubble is a couple pieces of candy corn, and a small key. Examine the crew it next to the Snoop Dogg bust. First, you plug the window back in so you stop stubbing your toe on things. Stubbing your toe is known to be brutal on your pulchritude stat. You pick up the cruet of brandy. Examine rope. You pick up the rope. Use to my gun on safe keyholes. You use your ring of keys to unlock the keyholes on the safe. The ring of keys blows a hole in the safe. The safe is open. Throw hammer through window. Now that the window is plugged in, you may effectively vent your rage with a heavy object. The hammer shatters the glass and falls to the street far below your penthouse office suite. Get candy corn in preparation of your own vampire act. You pick up candy corn and small key. P.S. Look through clown picture at Ace. A.D. Candy Corn Vampire. Ace Dick ate the candy corn! He is an unimaginative lout and an all-around wet blanket. Ace enjoys a small boost in pulchritude from the candy. His modest pulchritude gauge is now maxed out. He inadvertently swallowed the small key along with the candy corn. It is now safely stored in his stomach. Build Fort. You figure it's time to do something constructive for a change. Your stout bunker of particle board is a smashing success. The Zoolander chimney is the jewel in its crown. See what you have stashed in the safe. You can't reach the opening. You would stand on the chair, but you don't think it's quite high enough. Besides, it is now built into your fort, and there's obviously no going back. Throw fort out window. That's the stupidest idea you've ever had. Use bust stand as a step to access the safe. By stacking two bust stands, you can easily reach the safe opening. Go in, 